Hello everybody. Uh, I'm not really sure where to start with this video. What I'm trying to do is to isolate monocarion um, cells, or I should say monocarion um, cultures, from a spore swab. Uh, in order to do that, I did a dilution method, which uh, is in another video. It's called the ghetto, I think, swab dilution method. There's several ways you can do it. Uh, you can do it with a syringe, you can do it with a spore drop, you can do it with a get over. Uh, there's a lot of different ways. You can just look up uh, serial dilution uh, or some form of that on the on the internet or YouTube or whatever. Um, so what I did is I basically took uh, spores and I diluted them in sterile water and then I spread them on a plate. When I did that, I, I did it a little bit too um, too densely, I guess you would say. And so what I ended up getting was something that, uh, I don't know if you can see that very well. I, I've turned off the laminar flow hood and I've already done my real work. So um, what I ended up with, you can kind of see where I put little drops there. Um, what happened is basically I got um, what would be considered a flood plate. So if I wanted to pull a dicarion culture off of this, that would be quite simple. You can see there's no contamination. So my, my spores were obviously very clean. Oh hopefully because I made the swab um, so that that's reassuring uh, if you want to just get a dicarion later on maybe you lost a culture or whatever that would be that's kind of reassuring you know your, your spore swab was clean or your print was clean uh, but what I want to do is I want to get single uh, spore so you'll see this is SBI that that's the slang or what it's called acronym uh, single basidiospore isolate that's kind of the technical term for basically a single spore and so why I want to get a single spore is because those single spores are haploid. And so what I want to do is later on, I want to mate them. Um, I have a lot of mating studies going on right now. So I want to try to, um, I want to try to cross this uh, essentially with another single spore, which would be haploid from another cultigen or variety or strain, whatever you want to call it. Um, so what I did is because I spread these a little too thick, what I did was I took my very sharp scalpel here um, and uh, again, I don't know how well you can see this, but I took this and I sharpened it up actually on a, you know, just a good old fashioned kitchen whetstone. <laughs> uh, you can just do it on, on a, I don't know, a rock or whatever, on a, on a table, something like that. Get it really nice and pointy. You could in fact use a needle. Some people will actually use a needle. Um, one of my old lab mates used to actually use a dental pick, which is kind of scary looking, but um, anyway, somehow you need to try to get a single colony, which is derived from a single spore off of this plate and onto another, and that's what I did. So I took really, really tiny, I mean tiny, you're talking like, you know, ballpoint pen size pieces of agar that you can, or agar, that you can just barely see on the tip of that scalpel, and I put them onto other plates. So I did that four times for this plate. So you notice this is a TAC, you guys can figure out what that means. Uh, SBI is single basidiospore isolate. So this was about um, four or five days ago. So you saw those colonies growing out. And I put four on a plate, that's simply just to save real estate, you know, like instead of wasting four plates. Because I know what I'm gonna have to do is, so I did this with actually four plates. So I ended up getting 16 little pieces um, off the periphery, the very, very edge of any colony I could find that seemed to be sort of isolated. Well, I guess I've done this a few times and I, I'm pretty, I'm getting fairly good at it because I didn't even have to go into my third and fourth plate because the first and second plates, I pulled off six monocarions. So, so you know, let's have these little one, two, three, four in a clockwise manner. Um, again, I don't know how this is going to record. Uh, and I've got this level five, six. Notice I've also marked the top and bottom of the plate so I know which, you know, if this thing spins around, I can put it back to the clock position, 12 o'clock, I guess you might want to call it. Uh, I actually like to mark it at like one or two there. Um, yeah, upper right hand corner. So that's just the way I do it. And uh, again here, so I know if I want to pull a second monocarion, or maybe, you know, one of them, maybe I pull off a monocarion and it gets contaminated. You can keep these, these kind of back up. Now these will grow together and they will dicaryotize. So that's another kind of reassurance. If you see maybe this plate in two weeks, you will see all four of these monocarions. Um, they'll grow together and then you could again pull a dicaryon. But that's not what I'm trying to do. I don't want to mate another TAC with another TAC. I already have that dicaryon, right? So that's where I got the spores. So this is part of the whole sort of like cycle. Um, so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take these uh, monocarions, which I have isolated already, and I put them over there. They're kind of wrapped up nice and safe. Uh, what I did was I checked, let's just pull this one since I haven't done this yet. 
So in order to check these, this is where I need to use a microscope. So I, I hope this is all making sense to you guys. This is a lot and, and without making a two hour video, I don't really know um, how to do it anymore sort of succinctly. Uh, but what you're gonna do to check this little monocarion, look. So let's say I put five, six, I already checked those. Notice there's a minus sign there too. That means minus, no clamps. So notice one, two, three, four. There's a minus, 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 minus. So every time I check them under the scope, I do two things. I write a minus there and I subculture. So if you look here, there's two little slices or multiple slices. I don't know how well you can see that. See right there where I've made basically one, two, three, four. I've made a bunch of little squares. So what I did is I pulled off one of those little squares like that, a tiny, tiny, tiny little piece. It's hard to do this backward. I mean, tiny, you see that little tiny piece on the end there? Even tinier than that. So I take that, and again, you're doing this all sterily, aseptically, whatever. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna squash it onto a microscope slide. So I take this, and then I put it onto a microscope slide, and then I squash it. So I'm gonna use this cover slip that I, oh, it's stuck there. <laughs> well, you get a cover slip, and there's basically, I don't wanna go over there again. Uh, you can just squash it down. And then that's where the microscope video comes in. And you guys, I, I haven't been, six, uh, the camera mount for the, or the phone mount for the microscope is a pain in the butt. Um, so that's where you guys are gonna have to go consult another video. I'll try to make a video about how to find or not find clamps. Look for clampless mycelium under the microscope. It, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do when you're when we're first starting out. It gets pretty kind of intuitive after a while, but it makes your eyes very tired. Um, so you notice I stopped at six. I'm only really gonna use one, maybe two, as a double check of these, these monocarion haploid cultures for mating. So uh, in order to save plates and prevent myself from getting a massive like migraine headache, <laughs> I stopped at six. So I got six nice monocarion cultures from this strain. I still have the spores. If I need to make monocarions again, I mean, this took like a week maybe. Um, some total and then tomorrow or maybe the next day I can even go back to this and if I'm if I'm pretty certain that was a single spore I can actually use that colony for mating studies so I can go back so that's another reason for marking them number five so if I want to go back and I take TACM1 which is monocarian number one I can pull off again a tiny tiny little piece remember you only need like I mean we're talking like a, a tenth of a rice grain size of that colony and then you made it on, a, on another plate with another another culture. So that's that's again the long and short. I don't, I don't know you guys how to make it more succinct than that again without without actually showing someone how to do it like in person. This this is a kind of a tricky business. Anyway, I reckon that that'll generate all kinds of questions. Uh, again, I don't know if there's any resources out there, to be honest, that, that really show all this in one big giant sequence. Uh, in fact, that sequence and, and all of these sort of like, this was done like six days ago and this was done like 10 days ago. So all of these things require you to wait and, and do something and then wait. You know, that's what mycology is. You do a bunch of stuff and then you wait and then sometimes you throw stuff away. And then sometimes you mix up and a lot of times you wash dishes. <laughs> so for all you people out there who are getting into mycology, probably if you're doing this, you're not just getting into it. But um, yeah, you know, get used to washing dishes and throwing stuff away. But I always tell people now, like, if you don't like washing dishes, don't get mycology as a hobby. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, you guys, I, I'd love some questions. I'll try my best to answer them if I can. But like I said, this is something I've been doing for quite a few years. And to get it all into like a 10 minute video is, is uh, I don't know if I did a good job, but I tried. So anyway, I'll see y'all later. All right, bye-bye.